Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In one of my previous videos, I told you guys I found two part-time jobs and got two full-time offers in less than one month of being in LA. So today I'm gonna give you guys some tips and advice on how you can find jobs easily in LA. In my opinion, it's actually pretty easy to find jobs in LA. I've lived in about, what, three other cities? No, four other cities. And LA is actually the easiest place to find job. Like, if you're looking for a job, if you're really looking for a job out here, you will find one. It's not that hard. Um, the problem, though, is it might not be your ideal job. It might not be your ideal pay. But if you're desperately looking for something, you can find something. Back in June of 2018, I started looking for jobs out here. And I was applying to jobs, but I was getting a lot of callbacks. This was before I quit my job. I was actually thinking about quitting back then, but then I didn't quit. So I was applying to jobs, applying to jobs, and I was getting a lot of callbacks. And then I was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not ready to move. Like they wanted me to fly out to interview right away. But these jobs were not willing to pay for me flying out to interview. So at that point, I was like, okay, I should probably tone down on applying right now until I'm actually ready to move. So then after I quit my job, I started looking at jobs again. And I didn't really start applying until I actually got here. That first day I got here, I started applying, applying, applying to full-time jobs at first. Then the next day, I actually started applying to part-time jobs because I knew that it might take a while to find your ideal full-time job. You know, I wanted to have some type of income coming in, so I end up just applying to some part-time jobs, and then I actually had an interview like day number three of being here and then the first week of being here I had a part-time offer and through that part-time offer I interviewed with a full-time company I had a full-time offer that I turned down and then the next week I had another interview for a part-time job and that one was more flexible so I got that job and then two weeks later I had my full-time job that I accepted so it was <laughs> quite a process going through that but it was actually pretty easy i just applied and i got the jobs and so today i'm going to tell you where i applied how i applied and um what worked for me now one of the things i would say if you plan for moving out here you should immediately start looking at jobs in whatever it is that you're trying to do or that you plan to make money from to make pay the bills in the beginning like you should probably start looking at jobs for that um just not necessarily to make the move right away but at least look at jobs so that you can see what they pay and if there is um a lot of jobs out here for it because the last thing you want to do is come out here looking for a certain type of job but it's like a real skimp so now you have to do something else and nothing's wrong with doing something else but if you're able to like do that before coming here and that's one of the things I said in my how to prepare video is look at the job market before you come out here that is very important just to see okay are they paying something that you're willing to accept and also are you willing to switch career fields to get like your ideal pay um so look at jobs before you come, but if you are going to apply to jobs before you come here, make sure that you have money that you're willing to make the move right away. Um, there are some companies and some fields that are willing to interview you from far away, but what I've seen is most jobs want to hire people that are already here. And I know some of you may be saying, well, how did you get the interview if you weren't here? Well, on my resume, I didn't put that I wasn't here. I put that I was relocating here. Now, I'm not going to tell you to lie on your resume. You don't lie on your resume. You can finesse your resume, though, to make it look more like what they're looking for, right? So... What I did was I removed my Philadelphia address. I added 
relocating to Los Angeles. That's all I put. I put relocating to Los Angeles. And then at the time, I used one of those um, Google phone numbers, like those um, free phone numbers. And I put a Los Angeles phone number. And so I was actually able to get a lot of callbacks from that because I saw that when I was just using my Philadelphia address, I was not getting as much of a response as when I put relocating to Los Angeles. And then when you when they call you, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, when are you coming here? You better be coming here within the next month, okay, or the next two weeks because that's when they will need you to interview. Like, they'll need you to interview right away. So, I would make sure that before you start applying, just make sure that you're you're actually ready to make the move. If not, then I would not apply until maybe one to two weeks before you're ready to make the move. But if you just want to apply and then see what comes around... Um, maybe you want to do that for a year until something ideal comes around and you can do that. But just make sure that whatever job you're applying to, that if they are willing to hire you, you're willing to make the move and that you have your own relocation expenses. Because most jobs out here I've seen, they're not really going to pay your relocation unless like you're maybe an upper level employee, then you may be able to get your relocation paid for. But like a lot of entry level positions are not gonna be um paying your relocation and stuff like that. Maybe if it's like an internship or something, they may give you a stipend. And some jobs, some jobs do give you like a little moving fee, maybe, but it's not that likely. Um most jobs just hire people who are already here. That's the reality. One of the easiest ways to actually get a job out here is to transfer your current job and I was actually gonna transfer my part-time job in Philly but it was just gonna take too long and I wanted to move in the beginning of September so I end up just scratching that but there are a lot of people who actually transfer their job I mean a lot of them quit after <laughs> which is very bad but you can um, actually transfer your job like especially some of those big companies like if you work in retail or um the hotel industry or um the service any type of service industry jobs are usually pretty easy to transfer because those companies are usually all over or if you work for like just a regular office job sometimes you can transfer those as well um, but it's not as likely Another easy way to find jobs, and this is how I found my um, full-time job that I accepted, is through staffing agencies. And there are so many staffing agencies out here. They have staffing agencies for entertainment. They have it for just like even accounting and finance. They have it for healthcare. They have it for a bunch of different things. And so if you can connect with a staffing agency, and I'm not saying you shouldn't still look on your own, but if you can actually go through a staffing agency, it will make your job so much easier. Um, I've worked with staffing agencies in the past, but those jobs were like temp to hire. And I don't really like the whole temp to hire thing because those jobs are not usually um, for longevity. So I did this time, I did direct hire companies. And what direct hire is, is that the agency basically just serves as a middleman between you and the company. And whenever you're hired, you immediately go on the company's payroll versus like um, temp to hire, you're on the agency's payroll. So the company can pretty much let you go whenever, right? Um, but with the direct hire, it's... Um, it's more reliable because you know that the company is invested in you. The company actually has to pay the agency a fee up front in order to find you. So they're actually paying for you before even getting you. So once they hire you, you know that they're like actually invested in you. Some of the big agencies out here, Apple One, um, Robert Half, Office Team, there's a lot more. I just can't remember them off the top of my head. I'll link them in the bio. But there's so many staffing agencies out here. And you'll be able to find some type of job. I promise you. 
Um, what I use was VACO, and they do a lot of direct hire for accounting and finance field. Um, and my rep at VACO is really, really cool, and I, I, I like them a lot. Another thing people use is LinkedIn. I personally don't use LinkedIn. I don't like the idea of people knowing exactly where I work, but LinkedIn is really helpful. If you can connect with some employers out here and some agents out here, some recruiters, that is a great way to get a job out here, especially before you even come here. Like, Get on LinkedIn. There are Facebook groups where people actually like post jobs. And I'll also link some of those Facebook groups down here. And of course, there are the job websites like Indeed and Career Builder. Um, I still love Indeed. It's just Indeed is so many jobs on there. But there are also jobs specific for whatever field you're looking for. Like a lot of people come out here to work in entertainment, right? Um, one of the sites I use to find entertainment jobs is um, entertainmentcareers.net. And the only thing for me is that with my field, they the pay was just too low for a lot of those entry-level jobs. But like, if you're really trying to get into entertainment, like entertainment careers is really good. They have other websites for other fields as well. So, you know, just just Google it. Go Another thing is, don't be afraid to pick up something part time. Something like um, even Uber, Lyft. Like, if you can do that part time while searching for a job once you get here, then that would be ideal. Once you get here, it's actually, in my opinion, really really easy to find jobs as long as you have like average interviewing skills. You can get through and find some type of job. Like, it's really not that hard. Just um up your interview skills um you know make your resume look nice don't lie but you can finesse a little bit and make it look nicer than what it is um don't be afraid to have multiple resumes multiple resumes i have like i said i have like four or five different resumes i use a different resume that i would for like a service job from what I would for like an accounting job, of course, right? Another thing is connections matter. You know, I said LinkedIn earlier, but like if you know people who live out here, don't be afraid to reach out and say, hey, do you know anyone hiring in this field? Like, don't be afraid to reach out and ask people. Another thing is if you plan to be pursuing acting out here full time, then I would pick up some service skills or some restaurant skills wherever you are. And why I say that is that that's actually what a lot of actors out here do in order to pay their bills. Like, um, restaurant and service jobs are usually very flexible. Um, like my nine to five job, it, it would be very difficult to like pursue acting full time. But like if you do a um, part-time job like a service job or a restaurant job usually you're able to you know take off or whatever and then a lot of those type of restaurant jobs they understand that um, a lot of people are pursuing acting and stuff like that and that's one of the reasons I also think it's so easy to find jobs out here is because people are constantly coming and going there's so many people who come out here trying to pursue some career in entertainment and then they find that it's not what they thought it was or that it's not um moving at the pace that they want because everything takes time that's the one thing i have to say so if you're coming out here for acting just make sure that you have another plan working and some people are like, oh, how are you trying to be an actor working a 9 to 5? Well, I don't really plan to work a 9 to 5 forever, right? But I know that and my 9 to 5 job pays the bills. Another thing to consider when moving out here is salary. Your salary matters, you guys. Um, so if you're coming from a state that maybe has income taxes, like state income taxes, I should say, then 10000 added on to your salary should be okay to like maintain somewhat of a similar lifestyle but if you're coming from a state like um texas or florida where they don't have state income taxes i don't know if them having any local taxes then you should be looking to make at least fifteen thousand more than whatever it is you're currently making 
to like maintain somewhat of a similar lifestyle and then even that might not be enough depending on your salary like if you're making 30,000 wherever you are and you come here and you get like 45 I mean 45 is not really enough to like I would say get like your own one bedroom right but 30,000 in another it might be enough to like get a one bedroom and live pretty okay <laughs> so piggyback a little bit on going through an agency is that with an agency you can actually tell them what salary you require and then usually when they send you jobs you can pick and choose if you want to go to those jobs or not um i know with the agency i had even with my current job like they had a salary range and then i told them I want the top of that salary. Make sure that you have some skills on how to negotiate salary because some of these people, like, they will try to, like, get you to, like, let's say the job is paying 45 to 55K. They'll try to get, they'll probably get you to accept 45 because you're too afraid to negotiate the salary. Don't be afraid to negotiate your salary out here, you guys. And California is probably one of the easiest places to negotiate your salary simply because it's so expensive coming from wherever you're coming from. And one of the things you can do is look up how much they pay in your field and the industry in your field, and then look up what they pay as well by your um, experience level. And if you can do that, and then if you can articulate that to whoever you're negotiating your salary with then you can actually up that to the high end to like the $55,000 versus 45 you know what I mean so make sure you're willing to negotiate that salary you guys thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video